just sudden headache on the right hand side of the head. Oh. Sudden? Have you yeah. had water? Yeah, I've had loads. I've had half a bottle of oh. yeah, some more. I think I had this... such a bad night's sleep, guys. Mark had a terrible night. I, I didn't. Mean... I actually slept like a log. I was yeah. absolutely exhausted by the end of yesterday. And I slept in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, I'm well, like a pregnant woman. It's really odd. And you're eating strange pizzas. And you're snapping. Why? God, I've ne it's really it's really interesting to see a rational snapping from you without self justification and, and always sort of like seeing it's me. It's just weird because I just noticed you just snap. <laughs> snapping. Finished. <laughs> um, so how did you guys sleep? That's the most important thing. Who slept last night? I did with the full duvet on and no fan. Starfishing. Starfishing. Literally starfishing. I so hot at approximately 3 a.m. this morning. Felt like I was under a duvet, had no duvet. I in ended up, without bending down at all, using my legs, got my boxer shorts and fired them across the room. I just <laughs> couldn't bear it anymore. And I heard the twang as they landed on the mirror. Uh, so oh, look, our, our sheet's fallen down over there. That's going to be very dangerous later. New tip. I don't know if anyone saw this. It's going around on social media. Um, you know a lot of people have been putting tin foil up on their windows. Now the trouble is with that's very expensive. You have to buy loads of rolls of tin foil. But there was this hack today uh, that I saw, and this woman has bought those. You know those emergency aluminium blanket things For that runners. you get at the end of the marathon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently they are fantastic because the tin foil gives a blackout, but the uh, these these blankets you can still get the light through mm, and. Mm. And it's reduced the heat in her house by four degrees. <laughs> She's measured it. That's what she said. By four degrees. Wow, that's quite something. The car was registering 43 degrees yesterday. Um, uh, Pixie Petal, sleep, don't make me laugh, was up getting damp flannels and stripped off. Yeah, I, I inadvertently stripped off. Hello, Sharon Smallwood, member for 24 months. Um, <coughs> I didn't even wake up once. Uh, Whoopster UK Balfour, I always sleep in this heat, two duvets. Wow. Wow, you're bold. I slept with the duvet on. Martina McKeown slept like a baby from 11 till 6.30. Funny, isn't it? Wow. Why does some of us sleep and some well, of Well, it's don't? interesting because last night was the hottest night in British history. I mean, officially. Last night was the hottest ever recorded with temperatures staying above 25 degrees centigrade. Uh, the highest minimum temperature last night was 24.5 in Aberporth, West Wales, 25.8 in Kenley, South London. Have you ever heard, where is Kenley? I've never heard of Kenley, South London. Uh, so it's 25.8 degrees last night. It felt at about 6 a.m. like there was a sudden, it's like God had just sort of belched darkness at us and it kind of came through the window. It was awful. So we were 25 degrees during that. That's a normal Aussie summer, says Felicity Crook. Ah. Dawn Clarico filled a spray bottle and sprayed, they kept spraying each other. That's nice. I do, Mark finally, after all these days of heat, took mine and the girls' advice and had a shower early evening yeah. and could, had a cold shower. I, I just, I've got a bath upstairs that I, I ran first thing and I will probably get in that bath three or four times today and it's the only way to just, you know when you just feel so overwhelmed and claustrophobic and you're just not going to be able to cope, just go and get water. It wasn't icy enough. Countries yeah. that can't do that, don't no, 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 exactly, exactly. But some of you, are, I, I can hear you. I can hear you asking the question. I can hear you asking the question: Why do heat waves always feel worse in this country? Well, the Met Office has explained why does heat, when it's hot in this country, the same temperature feel hotter? <coughs> they say that the level of humidity can be higher in the UK than in continental Europe. I haven't said why. If humidity is high, it is harder for the human body to keep cool. This is made worse given that we're experiencing more tropical nights where the temperature doesn't go below 20. Buildings in the UK are designed to keep heat in compared to all other hotter countries, and we are less likely to have air conditioning. Lisa, I will check it today for you. So, um, so, so yeah, I, they seem to be suggesting it's more to do with homes and uh, a, lack of, a lack of preparation uh, for, for extraordinary heat. Um, so yeah, so we're coming off the back of, do we think it's going to, do we think it's going to hit 40, 41 today? What's the, what are the current estimates? Do we know? Well, they say, it, um, they're saying that it's going to be hotter than yesterday. Yeah, I mean, it hit 30, well, we hit 35, no, that's 37 
Uh, it's going to be 37. I just want to take all the tablecloths off my windows. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you mean. Although I haven't said that, it's quite nice having a bit of privacy. I quite, I quite like it. Nobody can see us. Well, yeah, but your family can. And so it's quite, they can't. Well, look at those lilies, don't they look gorgeous? Um, but of course, one of the other things I wanted to mention here was disability and heat. And I wanted to reach out to you guys and ask you, do you, is the heat aggravating any of your conditions? We talked briefly yesterday about mental health and how, uh, and some of you said it really resonated for you, that the claustrophobia, the inability to move, the stultifying sort of uh, humidity, if you like, aggravates negative feelings, and I felt that. And there's a piece in the Guardian, uh, in, on the BBC today, talking about people living with MS. Uh, mm. and how difficult it is mm. and how, all the different difficulties mm. that the heat wave presents to people who have either you know certain medications that they need to take or people who have to you know um, use you know pieces of kit like cooling jackets and things like that to, 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 to moderate their you know their body heat and things like that um, you know so someone from the MS Society said for many the symptoms of MS get worse in the heat balance fatigue mm. and changes to vision can be really, di really difficult. Uh, Sabrina from Scunthorpe, who has primary progressive MS, says she struggled with painful muscle spasms. Oh, God. Um, so, you know, there, there's, you know, someone else here says, I'll be in the middle of a sentence and I'll completely lose my train of thought. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's just spare a thought because for those, and you know, and there'll be lots of people who don't really, oh, look, here we go, Chris Potts. Let's have a look at what some of you are saying, because that's what I wanted to hear, really. Chris Potts, my rheumatoid arthritis is going mad. The humidity is not good, plus my medication makes me sweat anyway. This is horrendous. This oh, is another point, heart. yeah. The medication that encourages sweating, and I'm wondering whether that's one of my I'm issues. I'm a staple. Yeah, yeah I'm a staple. Rheumatoid swollen ankles I am, I hope you're well. Uh, rheumatoid swollen ankles and exhaustion. Slept most of the day yesterday. So grateful Plymouth isn't as hot as London. Mm -hmm. Erin Bullimore, my poor girlfriend. Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because I always think of arthritis as doing better in the heat. Mm. I think it would loosen or something, yeah. My Erin uh, Bullimore, my poor girlfriend's chronic hip pain is aggravated by humidity and pressure and both and both have been high for days. Mm. Um, migraines every day, so the heat makes no difference, says Amanda Roach. And also, if you're struggling with your mental health and motivation, because to be motivated in this heat is so hard isn't it you've got to just you've, you've got to hand it over and say mm. you know pace yourself there's only so much you can do in this Absolutely. heat but, but, but it just frightens me it's like where are we heading mm. all those people in my life when i've spoken about the terrors of global warming that fun oh it's just the weather we've always had weather well, and there's a lot of ask, there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of radio presenters that are so lazy about all of this they just don't want to talk about it well, and look at all four or five of the potential new uh, next prime ministers none of them discussed global warming they did now they're all backpedaling yeah well, did, let me just really read this final comment because i want to get onto that absolutely right. ellie denning says my close friend has ms and it's really hard to control body heat level for her mm. just going to a cold pool bath takes a lot of mm. effort just staying at in a dark, cool room, it's, it's not, not good, good for your mental, mental health. health. Yeah. Creator Holick, I'm having anxiety and panic, panic attacks, always made worse by heat. Because getting hot is one of the symptoms before the attack. And many mental health meds also aggravate internal body temperatures, you know, sweating. I wonder whether that's why I've suddenly become even more uncontrollably uh, hot suddenly. Uh, and Bev Hartnell, my asthma, obviously asthma, lung issues, breathing issues, they're aggravated. Uh, the peach, 72, I felt like I couldn't breathe yesterday. Um, yeah. Andrea's worried about her cat. Yeah, lots of people worried yeah. about their pets. Just keep yeah. making sure there's plenty and plenty of water. So anyway, sorry, yeah, going back to what you were saying, Andrew Marr was on the radio yesterday talking about how sick he is of people saying. So I just want to ask, whilst you were saying, yeah, that's a really important point you were making there, that all of the Tory contestants are uh, trying to... Backpedalling back massively. massively, aren't they? It just goes to show they've got, it's not in their head, it's not important. Because they're all worried about the power within their time. They're not thinking about our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and this beautiful, beautiful earth. Do you believe climate change is real? I've just asked. Because I think it's a... Okay, let's, I'm going to play devil's advocate. For, I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute. Okay, here, here's the often used argument by you know, people who say, oh, for God's sake, we've always had weather. And the argument runs like this. Well, we had heat like this in 1976 
And then there were 30, 45 years after that where it was relatively normal. So if you could have an extreme heat wave then, and there are many other occasions in history where you can say there was a heat wave back in 1554, there's, you know, are there not always these sort of odd examples or these errata where, where extraordinary heat lands, and we all go to, uh, and because we're all sort of death and destruction. Heated up, heated up generally, yes. we're up by however many degrees, then when we have these once in three decade moments, they're going to be hotter. Oh my God, I wish that that was the, what was happening, but it's not. Yeah, you could even go so far. I thought you were going to jump on board the, co uh, the climate denial, which is where I'm going, which I could, I could go a bit further and say, given the fact that the world is warming as fast as it is, I don't think we're doing too badly. If we're having these occasions, you know, relatively are speaking. Where you being? I don't know who you're being. No, no, I'm just saying lots are of you people. Are you being you? No. Oh. I just said devil's advocate. What's your name? Paul. Paul Fisher. What are you wearing? Paul Fisher. Uh, where um, do you go to? Where do you work? No, what Paul, do you Paul Fisher. I wear a I wear a tie with golf clubs on it. Ah. And I wear loafers. <laughs> what kind of car have you got? Uh, 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 Alfa Romeo. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I don't believe I don't believe I believe that what although the world on? is increasing in heat, this the the, the earth will sort its shit, shit out. The earth will. This, this is a mark. This historically, is historically COVID, this is poor climate, climate denial. denial. The, the planet has these wriggly moments, and we are having a moment. Yes, we are recording the hottest, but interesting point, and I'm going to make, you know, that could be made, is that we haven't yet hit the hottest point in British history. So why weren't we this hysterical back then? Or were we? And I'd just like to say again, that's Mark pretending to be a climate change denier. You can just see those words being taken out from me saying that. No, 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 but do you know what I mean? What, what do people say? The Kiwi Cathy says, yes, Mark, correct. <laughs> I mean, I, I of course, I don't that. believe that at I'd all. I'd love to believe that. Yeah, every bloody week in winter, we have a different named storm, says Linda Tyler. Uh, it's so funny because you're lollipop. They're going to name we the heat always think we know now. best. The reason, the reason I think that isn't the case is because when you look, for me, I always am drawn to climate change stories about the extremities of the planet. So when you know that in the Arctic Circle, they were recording temperatures of 30 to 40 earlier this year, that's a fucking problem. That's a major fucking problem. And when you've got glaciers... When you see glaciers floating... When, towards, yeah, the landmass yeah. of Greenland has almost lost, I don't know, a fifth or something because it's melting into the sea. Of course, that, that's where I'm at. Anne, also, oh look, Anne also, says, Paul, Paul, climate denier, Paul, we are a self-regulating system, but Paul, this regulation has tipped past and on. Please tell, educate Paul, the golf tie the other thing climate is change. That I find really worrying denier. is, and then somebody said it on the radio, and he, was, he said, I'm standing on this boiling hot night, all the lights are on, all the windows are open, and there isn't a single insect coming into my house. That's not normal. That, that is a worry. That's real worry. We've been going, where are the insects? <laughs> it's really clinic. It's Paul is a knob. <laughs> <laughs> what a tosser that Paul is. I man. love you, Nicola. Um, that, you're so right. Channeling full knob. Uh, Paul, so, so Paul is insects. a knob. <laughs> <laughs> Paul is a knob. The insects oh, you guys, are gone. You make me laugh. The plankton is at a dangerously low amount. You know when Nadia the walks into the kitchen and she fire. proclaims, did you know, guys, there's no plankton? You go, fuck, just... we're in all sorts of trouble. Well, I said to Mark the other day, I said, each day, each day, each day, let's have the best bloody day that we can. Yeah. Don't make the kids plan for way beyond the next few years. I'm going to make a Faith Goodman. Just Faith Goodman, you've brought up the spectre of China and the USA. I've I've got a terrible, uh, terrible. My true sense of the problem is this: is that all of these organisations, like the United Nations, uh, United Nations, <laughs> and all the global, all the all the governments in the world, and the economic summit, uh, ecological summits, they've all got these target emission emission targets. But they don't keep. Not only do they not keep them, just keep I, us quiet. Just to keep us quiet, but not only do they not keep them, not only is it to keep us quiet, but none of the data that they are going into these climate talks with, saying they need to bring down, is in any way accurate. 
I think that China, I think we have, if we actually knew the extent to which China, America and Russia and India and Africa and that's a, you know, the, the way in which all of these global kind of, you know, industries and economics, it's getting faster and it's getting stronger. And I think perhaps there's an aspect within the kind of government, governments, leaders, the, the haves and all that lot, that they will be able to buy their way out of the incoming uh, disaster. Well, right. Okay, that was going to be my next question. How can so many leaders be so fucking stupid? Because they, because How they're do thinking, they think because, they're because, because, okay, because, because I think they think they're thinking long termist, but long termist isn't fifty years. That's no. short termist, and I think the danger we have is that we struggle as a race, we struggle as creatures to see beyond our children's generation. I think if we're thinking about things for say our grandchildren, let's say we're thinking of things in 70 years time, we think that's long-termist. We think that's sufficient. We need to be thinking, okay, we're talking 2050, 2090, da, da. but that ain't, that's short-termist. In terms of the totally. globe. Yeah, no, but I don't think humans and leaders of these countries are they're just capable. thinking about their own term on this planet. Yeah, but no, but no, but they yeah, but power. they would argue that they're not. They're thinking of their term and the next generations, and then they're as long as they make some gestural not, sort of shift. They've got children. That's my point. That's I mean, point. Uh, this is what I don't understand. What, what, it's got to be that they're thinking of their own lifetimes, their own power, their own ego, their own needs, because we're not going to go beyond their lifetime. We're all part of the problem. We're all part of the problem. We are, we are all part of the problem Absolutely. in that look at how much everyone wanted to understand. No judgment here. Everyone wants to get away, have a break, yeah. go on holiday. Uh, me and Christos were looking at a, an app the other day that shows the day's flights across Europe in a sort of time lapse. And but you know, oh my it's God. so gratifying. But you know what? You know where we're at. Like, we're flying this year. I do feel bad about it. I do. But I also feel hopeless. And I feel like, you know, a bit like everybody says, as soon as we start talking about our own net zero and everything, everyone says, wow, what about China? What about Russia? They're not, they're not. So why should we? Mm. For me, it's not why should we? It's, it's, it will make no, I feel hopeless about it. And this is what I think that we need to change. What do you think now, guys, about, I was always, I was always supportive of the Insulate Britain what they are screaming at us is, this is a fucking emergency. That's why we are coming out and gluing ourselves to the pavement, because nobody is listening. And it's true, we're not listening. We're not listening. It, two, it's, it's... Two comments here which are really quite eye-opening. So eye -opening. Right? Laura Dion, problem is what we need to do to help the planet most won't, most won't want to do, such as mm -hmm. no holidays or just one a year mm -hmm. or one car per house. Melanie Williams says, for reference, planet Earth was taken out of the ice age with a rise in temperature of three to six degrees. We are about to supersede three degrees within the next decade. It didn't take us into the ice age, it took us out of the ice age. So the well, thing is, I think there's a sense that we can, I, I genuinely wonder whether a huge number of, of these leaders, I don't think any leader of any country, China or anywhere, is thinking, Brilliant, let's destroy the planet. Of course, that would be ludicrous, it's suicide. But I do think they're thinking we can moderate it, we can blunt the edges of it, and we'll be able to develop tech to deal with the consequences of a warming planet when we get to it. Yeah. I think that's what, I think, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think somebody, like very smart people I know, when I've been talking about the climate change and worrying about it over the last however many years, they will say, oh, somebody's going to sort something out. Some tech is coming in. The yeah. Chinese are yeah, creating yeah, yeah. incredible things. Well, I, I did share a story and the other day about, you know, um, what was it, hydrogen right, fuel. But here's the other problem for, for countries all over the world, is that, is that for, yeah, for a country to make the full commitment to what's necessary, that one country, say the UK said, right, we're going to do everything required to make sure that our sort of carbon footprint and everything is pure and we're going to, it will actively uh, rescue the planet. It's a game of chicken in terms of global economics and exactly. politics because the first country to do that is going to become non-profitable and is going to lose its competitive edge and is going to sink and not grow. And, and also kind of stuff. in countries where people are just trying to get their bread for that day because they are starving. Yeah. <laughs> and who look at us and say, well, you all got your economies booming by fucking up the planet. Now you're turning around and saying we've got to 
change all our behaviours? We can't. We Claire, can. Claire Laravid, not, not seen your name before, welcome. Claire Laravid, I think okay. Nadia, you're going to like this. Sunny nihilism, I like this phrase. Sunny nihilism is the way forward. We're all fucked, so we might as well be nice and have fun. I don't have a car and do everything else pretty much as I can from then on. Love and have fun. Sunny nihilism. That's like a name Sunny of a band. Sunny nihilism. You've just wow. got to just embrace it and just go with it and just, just rock it. Um, so there you but, go. Uh, but, but that is the scary thing, is it? That's how I feel, because I feel, oh, well, if I said to myself this year, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fly, um, <clears throat> it, will do, it will do absolutely nothing. Yeah. So just enjoy life. And Christos. the problem is, that's what everybody's thinking, isn't it? <laughs> Christos, Earth will go against us and it will be a very tough one. It yeah. always finds a way to sort itself and us just out. Just shake but us off. most probably it will be too late for us. I mean, don't forget, we are an absolutely incidental detail on this planet. We are. The planet's just we're like, we're fuck a you. Fleet. Look at a tree. Look at the way a tree looks back at you. Total disregard. And so it should. There's not even disregard. We're an irrelevance. We're a total irrele irrelevance until we chop it down. But it still doesn't even give up a put up a fight, does it? It just falls because it just knows that slowly it will get us back. Um, more importantly, I want to talk about armpit hair. Mm -hmm. There was a photograph. What accompanied this article was there's a piece, and they talk about Julia Roberts at the premiere of Notting Hill in 1999. <coughs> God, are they she, still banging know, on about I, that. I was so fuck shocked. Yeah. Say, hang on a minute. 1999. Yeah, let's, let's she think showed about her arm hair. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now it's very acceptable. Oh, now I was going to ask. Uh, Emma Corrin was on Vogue, is on Vogue's August cover, and um, it's the first uh, first cover to feature a non-binary person, and likely the first to show armpit hair. Right, sure. then. sorry. Um, in modern history, women have always had smooth armpits in the public eye, so it's hard to go back. Says Rachel Gibson, who's a hair historian. I always wanted to do a history of hair. Hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Get it. Um, what do you think? What is what is the what is the chat amongst women about armpit hair? Because of course, well, for men, it's, it's generational, not... isn't it? So my generation mostly would find it disgusting. I don't. I think it's beautiful. I wish my hair grew enough now. I have to have armpit hair. Oh right, does it I not think grow? It's sexy. Do you? Yeah. Um, I'm because just I think ask it's you guys. earthy. I think it's unconventional. It's sassy. It's like I'm not going to do. I'm not going to fit into this really. Um, narrow idea of what makes a woman bullshit if we're still looking at a photo from 1999 i mean the planet's on fire for fuck's sake and we're still talking about armpit hair oh god lisa Pryor, armpit hair is a no-no so where has it come from then this idea that it's not is it the idea it's what i was just, i was drawn to this because i was just thinking what is, why do we get so funny uh, about i think things? it all comes from the fact that men men seem to like no seem to want no nun hair and no armpit I hair. find all of that deeply us suspect. to be hairless. Is this so that we go back to a childlike appearance? Hairless. When I think of hairless, I think of a child. It's very, it is very odd, the inclination towards less hair. I want to say hair. bush to come back. Yeah, you, bushy come nose. Back the book. What was your phrase you used to say? Bring back Bring the back bush. bush. Lee Peart. And then Channel 4 made a programme about it. I was really annoyed. That was my title. <laughs> Lee Peart. Hi, Lee. Uh, it's misogyny. Saw a really interesting tweet yes. yesterday about why it is acceptable. Why is it acceptable for men to walk around with their top off? But if a woman does it, it's public indecency. I, I agree. I find it indecent when I sometimes have to look at these these guys that just think that their bodies are just wonderful wandering around that's not about body shaming them but it's there's no i suppose but i don't think it's just about a, 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 even a really good body yeah 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 no no no. It, as in no, no 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 but there's a sort of arrogance to shops, me there's an arrogance top on is just really there's an body. arrogance i find yeah. about some men that they're not all men obviously but some like men that, that think yeah it's all right for me to flop my bits about um but uh Oh look, Elliot Gonzalez, Ekin Sue. Hi Elliot, hope you're well. Ekin Sue has armpit hair on Love Island and received quite a few negative comments online. Shit. Which I don't understand. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. I think, yeah, I think it's incredibly natural and 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 real. And, and I just wonder wait, wait, again, you've kind of you've kind yeah, of gone you've to gone look towards the 70s the, porn again and see how sexy it is. But you're you're kind of going towards the, I think the dark, dark, deepest recess taboo of what is behind all of this. Which is that pornography and the sexualization of women has skewed towards keeping that sexualization younger and younger and younger. Yeah. And the idea is to remove any sign That's of maturity. That's what I say to my girls, the boy asks you to have any hair, I ask him, why? why? It's weird. It's so and, weird. And, and even really educated feminist girls 
are falling for this bullshit that it's cleaner. It is not cleaner not to have hair. Mm. Hair is there to protect a very delicate area. That's why we've got hair. Mother Nature doesn't muck about like that. There is every single thing that we have on our bodies is there for a reason. Anna says German porn has armpit hair. Um, yeah. Whoops, Whoopster UK Balfour. I am not a shaver. In the winter, my armpit hair is in full effect. My armpits are hairy right now. I don't even shave my legs. Hair does not bother me. Why do you shave your legs? I mean, the thing is, what I would say is, if you, if you really don't, I don't think everybody should have hair. And if you don't, if you're not having hair, you're not a good feminist. So I don't no. believe that. Yeah. If aesthetically it's more pleasing to you. Yes, yeah, like a man have, not having a beard. I, I don't. Thing. I'm really. I think women have really been manipulated into not having pubic hair. I really have a problem with that. Mm. Massively, I have a problem with that. Mm. Um, but uh, I actually like the look of my legs better without black hair on them. Right. Right. But, so it's just um, a preference. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I don't feel like I'm dictated to that anymore. I used to be when I was young. I was like, oh my God, hair. The world's going to stop turning if anyone sees I've got hairy legs. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and actually yesterday, one of our girls said, Mum, I'm going to embrace the hair on my arms. And it just made me so proud because I thought, oh God, I used to get ha I have hairy arms. I used to be waxing in them and everything. The fear of anyone seeing my hair and pulling down my... What? Mm. Who, who does that? Who manipulates us at such a young age mm. to thinking that that's shameful to have hair? Faith Goodman, would you wax your chest again, Mark? No. Least of all, because it wasn't permanent. Oh, it's just come it's back like, here. Oh my God, you've gone on about that. Before. You would, because what? It's got what? Yeah, but you said, why would I? Why, why did you say yes, I would wax my chest again? I would get, get your chest waxed again because it was so funny. Oh, I see. <laughs> all right. Um, Okay, for two final stories just to just to cheer us up as we go into the go into the end of things. Um, a British man was found dead on a sun lounger in Crete oh, after lying so motionless beautiful. on the sunbed for hours. Why did you uh, say the death. No, no, I didn't mean it like that. Oh. The, the death was reported. Uh, it was just a gear change. The oh, death sorry, was reported at, at a resort situated along the northern coast of the Greek island. I think the point about this story that struck me, because we had our experience in the park the other day, where someone was not moving and there was a stillness to them that, that was quite unnerving. Obviously we ended up, she ended up getting help. Uh, she was resuscitated, she came round. Um, keep your eyes and ears peeled when you're, when you're out and about and you know, people are, because people can go into a sort of shock and could potentially, you, know, you might think they're drunk or that they're asleep or whatever. I mean, it doesn't mean you go around <laughs> staring at everyone, but this was just a salutary lesson. I just thought this was quite, quite, quite shocking. The 54-year-old tourist was said to have been motionless on his bed for hours on Saturday uh, on the beach. Um, so, you know, again, they're not saying whether it was necessarily associated with high temperatures or whatever, but stay hydrated, stay careful, have people around you that can sort of check on you. And then this other horrendous story that broke last night was a killer troop of monkeys in India grabbed a baby and threw him off a third-story roof. No. A troops of monkeys in countries like India and Indonesia are becoming more and more habituated and more and more dangerous. Because people feed them. Because There's people a story feed about them. A bear recently with that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I, I remember seeing on social media <coughs> um, something like that. They got the baby back, but there was a woman just sat on her doorstep long narrow street. This monkey comes running down, and just picks the baby up. Yeah, well, this is really. It's, this was a family. They were relaxing on their roof terrace of their oh. home, three-story house in northern India. Uh, the boy's mother and father tried to chase the monkeys off when they made a grab for oh, their boy. Uh, they dropped the baby uh, and then they fled. But then as the father went to pick up the four-month-old, they ran back, picked the baby up and threw, no. it, threw it off the side of the building, oh, dying gosh. instantly. And this also comes less than a month after a one-month-old was killed in Tanzania by, uh, by monkeys too. So, Again, if you, I, when I travelled through Indonesia, the monkeys were incredibly aggressive in the road. You'd sort of drive, we, we travelled around in the little beamers, you know, you'd get little buses and you'd backpacking and what have you. And, the, and the, I often wondered why the drivers would stop when there was a gang of monkeys on the road. And they would be doing all sorts of unspeakable things as well. I mean, they're real show-offs and they'd grab at you and they'd run at you and then they'd speed through. So if you are by any chance going on holiday in these places, Monkeys are dangerous, as Clodagh Egan says, don't feed wild animals. 
Um, so there you go, guys. Guys, have a lovely day. Stay as cool as you can. Look after yourself. Reach out to people if, it, if the heat plays with the immense, because um, it, it can do. And something will be landing later. Lots of love. Bye.